Today let's talk about DNS encryption. So currently there are two main approaches out there. The one is DNS over TLS and the second one is DNS over HTTPS. Why should you even care about that? How do they actually work and what are the differences? And which role do they play in the IT industry? If you want to know that, then keep watching. Hi everybody, welcome to The Digital Life. My name is Christian and I'm always teaching you how to become a real IT professional. So if you are interested in learning Linux, Python, networking, cloud and all those stuff, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Lately there was a lot of stuff going on with DNS encryption. So Google has just announced that they will support DNS over HTTPS in their Chrome browsers. Microsoft has announced to support DNS over HTTPS in Windows 10. And Mozilla has revealed that Firefox will enable DNS over HTTPS by default in the complete United States. I think it is time to talk about DNS encryption and why should you even care about that. And we will start right now. So when you want to browse a website or access a server by name, your computer will actually send out a DNS request to your private home router that will mainly ask your ISP to give you the IP address of the actual destination host. This is done via a DNS request and the packet is completely unencrypted. That means your ISP or basically anyone in between your computer and the destination DNS server can read and inspect the traffic, can actually see which websites you are browsing or which servers you are trying to resolve. So this actually wasn't a big deal for a long time. The DNS protocol exists for decades without any major change to security or anything else for many, many years. So why is everybody talking about it now? I think this is mainly because some companies are really trying to push that technology forward. We have seen something similar with HTTPS, like Google with their Chrome browsers are trying to enforce people to access websites only via the HTTPS protocol, that means only via encrypted traffic. And encrypting DNS packets is just basically the next step. So the main goal of DNS encryption is to increase security, increase privacy, but we will have a look at this later because I think this is not only a good thing, there are a lot of concerns and problems with this technology and actually how companies are dealing with that. But let's discuss that later. Let me first explain to you how DNS is really working and how these two main approaches DNS over TLS and DNS over HTTPS look on a network layer. So let me share my screen with you guys and I can demonstrate that to you. So when your computer try to resolve an IP address by name, it will send out a DNS request to your main DNS server. The packet will look like this. It starts with a basic IP protocol that mainly contains the IP address of your DNS server. For example, let's just fill in the IP address of google.com. Usually this is distributed via the DHCP server of your private network, but let's just assume this is configured to use this IP address. On top of the IP protocol, we will add the UDP protocol, which is a stateless protocol and operates on port 53. That is the port for DNS requests. And on top of that, we have our DNS protocol. The DNS protocol contains mainly the name of the server you want to resolve the IP address from. So this will be the name of the website or the server you want to get the IP address from. So this packet is completely unencrypted. Anyone that intercepts this packet can filter and inspect it. Mainly ISPs or governments filter that to check which websites their citizens are really browsing. In order to improve security and privacy, people have implemented two main approaches to encrypt that data. So first let's have a look at DNS over TLS, how that is working. So we will start again with the same IP protocol. And let's just assume we will open a DNS over TLS, a connection to this DNS host. On top of that we add the protocol, but we are not sending out UDP requests, instead we are using the TCP protocol. And this uses the port 853 to differentiate these requests from the unencrypted DNS requests. On top of that we add a new layer and this is a TLS protocol. The TLS protocol will encrypt all the data 
And on top of that, we still have our DNS protocol. So this is also requesting a name and try to resolve an IP address. So because of the TLS protocol, this request is completely encrypted from here. So your ISP or basically anyone in between can't inspect this traffic anymore because it's encrypted. And that is basically how DNS over TLS is working. DNS over TLS is very easy to detect because it uses this port here, the 853. Let me do a short demonstration how you can do that. So I have installed on my Windows subsystem for Linux a DNS server called Stubby and configured this server to use DNS over TLS requests to the Cloudflare server. To do that just start Stubby with root permissions and I will set it to verbose mode 7 so you can actually see the log files. So our DNS over TLS server is just started. Let's do a DNS query. Because I haven't configured my Linux subsystem to use the local DNS server yet, let's just do an NS lookup to the digitallife.com and say, hey, please use the local host as your DNS server. Now let's execute this request. And you can see the Stubby server has received the DNS lookup and forwarded this to the cloud server. Let's have a look in Wireshark how this network packet will look like. You can see our client is opening a DNS over TLS connection. This is a SYN packet and we can see this is the port 853 for DNS over TLS. You can see it's doing a TLS version 1.3 connection and this is using a shortened version of the handshake. It's basically just sending out the client hello, gets back a server hello, so we cannot inspect the traffic anymore. You can see these DNS requests are completely encrypted. When we try to open it, this is an encrypted payload data. Now let's have a look at DNS over HTTPS. It may sound similar, but it uses a different approach to encrypt the data. So instead of using the TCP protocol on port 853, which is DNS over TLS, we are using the port 443, which is basically the same as normal HTTPS connections, because it is a normal HTTPS connection. Let me show you. So we now add the TLS protocol again, TLS, and encrypt the data. But on top of that, we don't add a DNS protocol. Instead, we're using just the HTTPS protocol. And we are sending out a GET or a POST request. So this is defined in the RFC that you can send either a GET or a POST request to a URL and use this path extension here, dns-request and as a parameter, you append dns equal and then the name you want to resolve. The web server need to take care of differentiating HTTP requests and DNS requests. And currently there are not many servers that actually support DNS over TLS or DNS over HTTPS yet. Mainly companies like Mozilla, Google and Cloudflare are really pushing that forward. So let's just create some packets again and have a look on Wireshark how these packets are looking like. To do that, let's just start a DNS over HTTPS server on our Windows subsystem for Linux. And I have already downloaded one, this is DNSS. Let's enable DNS to HTTPS. Also need to execute that with root permissions. Let's test that. So to do that, we again will execute nslookup that digitallife.com on localhost. And you can see we have now resolved the IP address. Now let's have a look in Wireshark. And you can see it opens a connection, a normal HTTPS connection. You can see it here, it uses a TLS 1.2 protocol. So therefore it has a slightly different handshake. It uses two packets more, you can see it here. After the SYN connection, it uses a client hello, the server hello comes back, and then it will exchange the servers and the client certificates. You can also see that actually looks like just a normal HTTPS request on port 4 for free. And that is also the main problem or the main advantage, depends on how you see that. Because it's hard for anyone to differentiate between a normal HTTPS connection and a DNS request. 
and this is also the main disadvantage and the main point people are criticizing with that because you actually can't do DNS filtering anymore and this also becomes a problem for countries like the UK because they are required to store 12 months which websites their citizens are browsing and they mainly do this via DNS filtering. So people are saying this is great for privacy because ISPs and governments can't look up your websites anymore you're browsing. But that's just half of the truth, because when you send out an HTTPS request to browse a website, you are still sending out an unencrypted SNI, so anyone can look up the URL you are browsing. But it's harder for ISPs or governments to really inspect that, because DNS is a very well established protocol and many technologies rely on DNS filtering or DNS inspection. The other thing you need to consider is, there are not many servers that actually support DNS over HTTPS now. That's mainly companies Google, Cloudflare or Mozilla, they are offering DNS server through DNS over HTTPS connection. So you can say, okay, I just sent out my requests encrypted so my ISP and government can't see them. But your actually provider you are sending these requests to can see it. So you are mainly just switching from ISPs to big cloud environments or big cloud content delivery networks. So you can see there are not just advantages, there are also some disadvantages and there are some considerations you need to be aware of. However, I think we need something new. We need a new network protocol to encrypt all the data we are sending out. However, I'm not satisfied with how companies are dealing with that topic. Anyway, I think it's very interesting to see how that will come up in the future and how that will evolve. I hope you liked this video and you could learn something new. And if you enjoyed this, then please hit the like button so I know this is valuable to you and I can do more videos about networking and network protocols because I think this is a very interesting topic everyone should care about. Anyway, so thanks everybody for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, take care of yourself and I see you soon.